Hi everyone, welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. Yeah, before I begin, let me wish you all a very happy new year. So, in this session, we will be discussing a very important topic in pathology of endocrine system that is medullary thyroid carcinoma. So, we will just briefly look into the basics of uh, thyroid gland and the cells involved. We will see the classification of thyroid tumors and then in detail about the medullary thyroid carcinoma. In one of my earlier videos, I had talked in detail about pathology of uh, medullary thyroid carcinoma. Okay, let's look into the medullary thyroid carcinoma in today's session. So, you all know that the thyroid is the butterfly shape endocrine gland situated in front of the neck then histologically there are two important types of cells you need to know one the glands which are lined by the cuboidal epithelium or flattened epithelium in the most active state this epithelium will be cuboidal later it can be flattened right so this cuboidal epithelium is called as follicular cells right these are the cells lining the thyroid follicle so that's why they are follicular cells the second important type of cells which you should know they are the parafollicular cells why are they called parafollicular because they are situated next to these thyroid follicles adjacent to these thyroid follicles and hence they are parafollicular cells and they are also referred to as c cells Apart from these two types of cells, that is follicular cells and parafollicular cells, which are the major functional cells, you also have other cells in the form of, you know, endothelial cells of these blood vessels and the stromal cells. For all practical purposes, we should be concentrating on the follicular cells and parafollicular cells for us to understand in detail about the thyroid tumors. Now, why are they called C cells? That's because these cells are the ones which secrete calcitonin and calcitonin is a very important hormone which maintains our calcium homeostasis right so that is the reason why these parafollicular cells are referred to as c cells now coming to the classification of thyroid tumors broadly they are classified as benign and malignant tumors let me not go into details about benign uh, tumors of thyroid. Straight away, let's look into malignant tumors. And you know that there are two types of cells, right? That's why the classification is pretty simple. Whether it is follicular cell derived or parafollicular or C cell derived tumors. Okay. Now, what are these follicular cell derived tumors? These are the follicular cell derived tumors, which include papillary carcinoma and lots of its variants. You have follicular carcinoma and you have anaplastic carcinoma. Okay, anaplastic thyroid carcinoma. In the parafollicular or C cell derived tumor, malignant tumor is a medullary thyroid carcinoma. Okay, it can it can be called as medullary thyroid carcinoma or medullary carcinoma of thyroid. Similarly, papillary thyroid carcinoma or papillary carcinoma of Thyroid. So now the classification is pretty simple, right? One, whether it is a follicular cell derived or whether it is a C cell derived tumors, particularly when we are looking at malignant tumors. So in today's session, let me discuss in detail about the C cell malignant tumor that is medullary carcinoma of thyroid. Right? You don't have a benign tumor which is arising from parafollicular cells. Okay, we are looking only at the malignant tumor that is medullary thyroid carcinoma. So these are also referred to as neuroendocrine tumors because the follicular cells are derived from the endoderm, whereas the parafollicular cells are neural crest derived cells. They are ectodermal in origin, and because they are uh, neural crest derived cells and also secrete calcitonin, which functions as an endocrine organ, these cells are referred to as neuroendocrine cells. Okay, and the tumors arising from these cells are also referred to as neuroendocrine tumors. They account to around one to two percent of thyroid cancers and the most important thing about this cancer is that it secretes lots and lots of calcitonin it can also secrete somatostatin serotonin and vasoactive intestinal peptides right so medullary carcinoma can be sporadic or can be familial so sporadic is the most common one it accounts to around 70 to 90 percent of cases and the familial constitutes the remaining 10 to 30 percent of cases 
the familial forms are the ones which are part of the multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome which is either men 2a or 2b it can also be familial medullary thyroid carcinoma without an associated men without an associated multiple multiple neuro multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome so it can be without this syndrome or non syndromic or can be syndromic right so this non syndromic medullary thyroid carcinoma which is familial as well as the sporadic type of medullary carcinomas have the same you know uh, epidemiological features which means they occur in adults in around fifth to sixth decades of life whereas the ones which are associated with syndromes are most often found in children and young adults that is the most important thing which you should remember if it is syndromic okay then it will be familial and it is found in children so the most important pathogenesis of these cancers are gain of function or driver mutations in the RET gene, RET receptor tyrosine kinase. Okay. So that's a very important concept you need to remember. Gain of function driver mutations in the RET receptor tyrosine kinase. Now, morphologically, medullary uh, thyroid carcinomas can be either solitary or can be multiple. They are most often found in the upper two thirds of the lobes of thyroid because the parafollicular cells are more concentrated. They are more dense in the upper two thirds of the lobes of thyroid. Okay, so that's the reason why you find most often the medullary uh, thyroid carcinomas most often seen in the upper lobes, upper two thirds of the thyroid on either lobes. It can be right or left lobe. Sometimes, you know, it can be multiple. When you see multiple medullary thyroid carcinomas, you should suspect that it could be a case of familial medullary thyroid carcinomas. Very rarely, you can find variable amount of necrosis and hemorrhage. And remember, if the tumor is less than 1 centimeter, okay, then it is called as medullary microcarcinoma. So, tumor less than 1 centimeter is referred to as medullary microcarcinoma. So, microscopically, what do you see? So, they are the cells of medullary thyroid carcinomas are polygonal cells because the normal parafollicular cells are polygonal cells. The polygonal cells, normally, the parafollicular cells are polygonal and they are slightly larger than the follicular epithelial cells. Tumors of these parafollicular cells or C cells are having polygonal shape. It can be spindled or it can be plasma cytoid shape. Okay. And these are the kind of cell which you can see in the medullary thyroid carcinoma. How are they seen? They can be seen in the form of solid sheets. They can be seen in the form of nests. They can be insular pattern or even trabecular pattern. Okay. These are small nests of these tumor cells which are more or less polygonal in shape. Can you see these nests of tumor cells separated by a delicate fibrocollagenous stroma, not vascular. Remember, it's a fibrocollagenous stroma. At places, the stroma is very dense and it's more eosinophilic. It looks like as if there is something in between these tumor islands. Can you see that there are lots of these eosinophilic material, you know, uh, eosinophilic or hyaluronized material in between. And this is actually amyloid. Okay. Remember, what is the function of T cell? It secretes calcitonin. What is calcitonin? Calcitonin is a polypeptide. It's a hormone. It's composed of polypeptide. Now, we are dealing with the case of cancer of these parafollicular cells or C cells. So, more and more cells are being proliferated. More and more cells are being formed. So, more and more calcitonin is being produced right so when more calcitonin is produced what really happens is that the normal cell does not have the capacity to form these proteins because it's a polypeptide so more and more proteins are formed so in the process of formation of extensive or excess of hormone locally what really happens is some of these proteins are misfolded okay some of these proteins are abnormal proteins and because these are abnormal proteins they tend to form fibril and then they deposit as amyloid okay that is the reason why there is amyloid deposition locally in these cancers in these tumors medullary thyroid carcinoma has lots and lots of amyloid and that's because of increased secretion of calcitonin and this calcitonin is more or more of a polypeptide hormone and 
in the process of formation of more and more polypeptide hormones there is always a possibility of proteins being misfolded and then deposited as amyloid fibrils that's a very characteristic feature of medullary thyroid carcinoma don't forget this right so solid solid sheets nests protocolar or insular pattern of polygonal cells separated by a stroma which contains amyloid okay and if you stain this amyloid by a very beautiful special stain called congo red it stains brilliant red okay so that is a red colored uh, so you know um, amyloid in congo red stain and if you subject this particular congo red stain in polarizing microscopy very classically you find apple green birefringence so that is how you demonstrate amyloid right first you demonstrate amyloid by staining with congo red stain and then do a polarizing microscopy which shows brilliant apple green birefringence now, how do these patients manifest they often present as a neck mass usually in the upper lobe of the thyroid upper two thirds of the thyroid lateral lobes and sometimes you i mean sometimes the patient can also present with compression effects okay and what are the compression effects it could be dysphagia dysphagia or hoarseness of voice or it could be hormonal effects remember we i told you that it secretes lot of hormones calcitonin other than calcitonin you also have vasoactive amines so that's why these patients may present with diarrhea as well raised serum calcitonin levels will invariably be present and then you can you know confirm this by presence of RET mutations confirm the presence of medullary thyroid carcinoma pathogenesis by identifying RET mutations by molecular diagnosis. Now, the general aspects of diagnosis and treatment of medullary carcinoma, you generally do an ultrasound if the patient comes with swelling in the front of the neck, do an FNAC. In FNAC itself, you can make a diagnosis of medullary thyroid carcinoma. It, I mean, the patient might be subjected for partial or total thyroidectomy depending upon the involvement of the thyroid gland and then the patient will be subjected to thyroid hormone supplementation. So, that is all about medullary thyroid carcinoma and the first topic in 2024 if you have liked this video hit the like button do comment because it is your comments which is the most important motivational thing for me to record more and more videos don't forget to subscribe if you feel this channel is useful and please do share if you find this video useful thank you